Welcome back. This is Carol Monley, and we're doing part two of Sustainable Hawaii today. Uh, I'm stepping in for Kirsten, and uh, we're so happy to have back our guest from the prior sec uh, show, and Tony Paris and Kainoa Kalokokui Norikawa, right? Thank you yes. for coming back. Thank you. And the discussion we were talking about is the, the newest, the largest, not the newest I've heard, but the biggest um, marine national monument outside here in Hawaii, Papahanao Mokuakea, correct? Yes, so it's not only the largest marine national monument or the largest marine protected area for that matter, it is now, since the expansion was announced in August, uh, the largest protected area of any kind in the world. In the world. Yeah. So just to get an idea, it's, uh, if I think we have a graphic up, but it's one and a half million square kilometers, um, 578,000 some square miles in area. So that is larger, that's nearly the size of the Gulf of Mexico. Oh my goodness. Um, it's larger than not all but 19 of the world's nations. So just really trying to get that into perspective. So what you can see here on the graphic is the, the very outside line is the United States EEZ, um, Exclusive Economic Zone Boundaries. And the smaller blue line above uh, that's surrounding the Northwestern Hawaiian Islands is the original uh, size of the monument. And then the sort of dotted line that goes around on, on the left side out to the EEZ is the expanded area of the monument. My goodness, okay. And have you all been there? I have not been there. <laughs> I hope to be there soon, but not yet. Yeah. Have been you there been there, Tony? Mm -hmm. I have been there, um, but it is very difficult to get there. It's the remotest place, it's the remotest protected area in the world. So our, I think I said this before, but our mantra is we bring the place to the people rather the people rather than bringing the people to the place. And we do that in a lot of ways with uh, our outreach and education efforts. At NOAA, through NOAA. Through NOAA and through our partners. So the monument is actually co-managed by seven different entities, federal, state, and non-government organizations. Like? Uh, so there's two different agencies within NOAA. There's the Office of National Marine Sanctuaries. There's NOAA Fisheries. There's uh, two under the, uh, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. There's two under the State of Hawaii, Department of Land and Natural Resources. Uh, there is the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. Is that seven, two, 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 and one? Yes. yes. <laughs> so we have representatives from all those seven different agencies and entities doing work in the monument and supporting the management and restoration of the monument, plus numerous partners that aren't even one of those seven agencies. So we have a lot partners. Mm -hmm. It's a very unique management structure, so it is it is an experiment. It's working out wonderfully, and we're very happy to now co-manage our large expanded monument. Wonderful. So tell us how you're, man you're co-managing and what has changed since the new, uh, the expansion of the monument in terms of your roles. So the, like I said, so we have three, so we have seven co-managers, we have three co-trustees, which are the broader agencies. So we have the uh, Department of Commerce, the Department of Interior, and then the State of Hawaii. So as part of the expansion, um, the Office of Hawaiian Affairs is going to have a stronger role in the management of the monument. And that hasn't been worked out yet since the uh, announcement is so new, they're gonna work out the details of that. But mm -hmm. we'll just rest assured that the, I mean, the Native Hawaiian community has always had a big part in the monument, even before it became a monument. We have advisory groups, we have the Native Hawaiian Cultural Working Group mm -hmm. that works very closely with the monument managers and partners to do the work in the monument. So there's a very strong Native Hawaiian cultural tie to not just the Northwestern Hawaiian Islands, but the management of it through the monument. And, and I know that you're gonna talk, uh, tell us a little bit about the scientific discoveries within the monument. Yes. Yes, we are. <laughs> and so in the newly expanded area, the deep sea, we have these five up on the screen, well, four new discoveries that we really want to focus on. But we have this really cute new species of octopus that we found. We nicknamed him Casper. <laughs> He's adorable. How big is he? 
I believe he's pretty, pretty small. small huh? <laughs> yeah, pretty small little dude. And then we also found a couple really huge things. And so we found the largest sponge in the entire world. It's about the size of a minivan. No kidding. Yeah. yeah. Do they have genders? Fit male or female? Sponge? That's the that sponge. That is a really good question. <laughs> I do not know. I, don't, to get I, one of our I scientists hesitate to mis, you know, <laughs> name them he or she, but is that the sponge? This is the sponge. And so look at all those intricate folds. And if you look to the right, you can kind of see that sponginess there. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it is absolutely huge. And we weren't expecting to find something so large at the depth that we were exploring. Uh, we also found a very large Gorgonian, which is this beautiful spiral looking organism. And it is as big as an adult giraffe. My goodness. Are, are each of these things brought up from the depths of the ocean to be studied and photographed or just photographed in situ? So we have these submersibles that can go that deep and take pictures and explore. We have lots of video that we can use to categorize these new species. Uh, because of just the limitations of the actual submersibles, we can't take very many samples mm -hmm. and so I believe it's two biological per dive and two geologic two I'm, yeah, I'm geological? not sure of the details but the, the submersible small. does have the capability to take a sample but, but nothing that they big. Do, yeah they don't take the entire organism they'll just take a teeny little snippet of in this case you know the black coral or the gorgonian just so they can analyze the components of it and they bring it back up and, and they bring just bring the teeny little sample, science right. center sample. right Right. Yeah. And now what's going to happen with those um, particular new, what do you call them, organisms? These new organisms, they yeah. become like, classified and is there an attempt to try to bring them to the surface and um, propagate them? <laughs> <laughs> propagate them? No, I don't think we're, we're quite there yet. But they, the samples do get brought up, they get preserved, and they get sent to institutions around the world that specialize in whatever species that is. Um, so the different corals or uh, lemu algae that we find will go to the different specialists around the world for categorization and for safekeeping. Um, oh, can we? Okay, this right here is an uh, undescribed or new new uh, species of lemu that was described at one of the deeper dives in the monument. Can we go to the slide before? I don't know if she can go back. Okay, thank you. Beautiful. <laughs> yes. So this is on one of the deep reefs off Cure Atoll, which is the northernmost atoll in the entire Hawaiian archipelago. This is approximately a little bit deeper than 300 feet, and our NOAA divers and partners are using technical rebreathers to reach these depths. But what's really important about this picture is every single fish you see is an endemic species, meaning it is only found in Hawaiian waters. That is unheard of anywhere else in the world as of yet. This has been documented. Um, so, and this is in the uh, boundaries of the monument before it was expanded. So just finding these things out, and this is relatively, well, I don't want to say relatively shallow, but at 300 feet, we can still go deeper with the ROVs, which is where the, um, the organisms that Kainoa showed you before are found. So the, in the expanded area, there's a lot deeper areas. Most of the water in the monument is below 3,000 meters. And they harbor seamounts, which are undersea mountains that go from the ground, from the seafloor up about 1,000 meters. So these are enormous structures. And they harbor all kinds of the, those different organisms. High density uh, sponge and coral communities that are just filled with beautiful um, feather stars and uh, basket stars and corals and sponges and just creatures like the, um, the Casper octopus, I'll say. Um, so there's 75 known seamounts in the expansion area alone. And most sea of mounts. Sea mounts, undersea mountains, basically. Yes. And they've yet to be explored. So we are Exciting. really likely going to find some new uh, organisms there. Mm -hmm. yeah. and so tell me more about the coral. We oh, the coral. So one interesting thing that we found, this was within the original boundaries of a monument, was the oldest living organism that we know of. And so it's this beautiful black coral. That's and so, black coral. Yes, it's a beautiful, huge black coral. And it can live 
over 4,500 years. My goodness. And so Why is it called black if it looks <laughs> <laughs> that is another color? Do you want to take that? Okay. I was going to say, that's an excellent question. Actually, black coral can be, black coral is found in many different colors, orange, red, yellow, green, but the base of it, or the, what do you the call it? The inner stuck, structure. Yeah, is when you take it up and polish it, is black, and that's what they use for jewelry. I see. Um, yeah. Yeah, this specimen specifically was found between 300 and 500 meters. So very, very deep. Right. And so we're really excited about like Tony said, all of these new seamounts that we can right. explore because we're going to undoubtedly find lots of very old creatures, lots of new specimens that we can document. And so this is all very exciting because it's all completely new to science. Yes, yeah. and you mentioned the limu. Is the limu has it been tested for edibility? Can it be eaten? I assume, of course, the fish can be eaten, but. That's a good question, too. <laughs> I don't know that much about that. I don't think it would, has been tested for that, but mm -hmm. I, you know what? I don't know. We can ask our, we should get our science we crew should. to come in and, and sure, have we'll those do a kinds part of three. three. Yeah, it'll be great. Yeah. Um, but they're really pretty, nevertheless. Beautiful. That's the limo. That's one of the many. There's what, been, that you discovered, yes. Yeah, there's yes. been many. I think, I want to say 70, but I don't want to, mm -hmm. I want, yeah, species, mm -hmm. new species. Mm -hmm. um, so lots of different kinds of organisms. So before the expansion, was there risk of them being destroyed or affected by see, a fishing or any other kind of exploration that might have harmed, harmed them? So, I mean, because it wasn't officially protected, there's always the chance that it could be affected negatively somehow, mm -hmm. but but the, yeah, but the expansion just means now that it, it has the same protections as the previous boundaries of the monument, which is no take. So it offers a lot more for us to study what's there, because it's really important to find out what's there before you start exploiting an area. Right. So, you know, just knowing that it's a very unique place from what we already do know, imagine what we don't know. Okay. So now have you, you mentioned that you've been there, but there's no landmass, of course, right? So it's just been on a ship. What kind of a... So there's actually 10 um, islands and atolls that are. are kind of dotted through the monument. And I think if we bring up the, uh, the map again, you can see. Um, but they are very small and a lot of them, I mean, you can't land at them in a big ship. So most of the expeditions that take place in the monument go by ship. Um, there is a small runway on Midway Atoll, which is about midway. <laughs> um, Second to the last, right below Curie. Right. Yeah. Um, so I've been there twice, once on a plane to Midway Atoll and once by ship through some of the other um, islands and atolls. Um, but let me interrupt and sure, sure. it's really fascinating. Let's go to a short break okay. and we'll follow up and uh, thank you for joining Ability Hawaii again and we have our guest Tony Paris and Kainoa Kalokui Norikawa. We'll be right back. Thank you. Aloha. My name is John Waihe and I actually had a small part to do with what's happening today. Served actually in public office. But if you don't already know that, here's a chance to learn more about what's happening in our state by joining me for Talk Story with John Waihe every other Monday. Thank you, and I look forward to your seeing us in the future. Hello, my name is Crystal. Let me tell you, my talk show, I'm all about health. It's healthy to talk about sex. It's healthy to talk about things that people don't talk about. It's healthy to discuss things that you think are unhealthy because you need to talk about it. So I welcome you to watch Quok Talk and engage in some provocative discussions on things that do relate to healthy issues and have a well-balanced attitude in life. Join me. Welcome back. This is Carol Hanley with uh, my special guest, Tony Paris and Kainoa Kalakukui Narikawa from NOAA. And specifically, they've been working on the uh, biggest marine national monument here in Northwest Hawaiian Island. 
uh, otherwise known as Papa Hanao Mokua Kea. So welcome back. Thank you. So we've been having this interesting discussion, both part one and part two. How can people get involved in educating and learning more and benefiting from uh, this expansion? That's a great question, a really important question. And so the first thing people can do if they're interested in learning more about the monument and the expansion and all the animals that we discussed today, uh, you can go on to our website. So if you just Google PM&M, or if you can spell out Papahana Mokua Kea, <laughs> you can get to our website and we have links that you can go to to learn all about the man monument. Uh -huh. Excuse me. And then also, uh, we have quite a few educational opportunities. If you're a teacher or a student or a parent, um, you can go onto our education link uh, and they're listed there. But I'd like to shout out our Moku Papa Pa Discovery Center in Hilo. And so that's our very own Papahana Moku Akea Center that people can come and visit. You can see um, a large saltwater tank that has some of the really special species of fish presented there at the Discovery Center. Is it in downtown Hilo? It is right along Front Street. Is that the name of the street? I, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. it's, it's right, right across the waterfront. Yeah, it's right yeah, on the waterfront. waterfront yeah. street. Um, also, we have a wonderful program called Navigating Change that I work on. And so if you are a teacher, uh, you can find my contact information and I can come to your classroom and give lessons on the monument. I can talk about any of our really special animals. I can talk about marine debris, invasive species. And so anything to do with the environment and learning about the monument, I can come in and help with any of that. Are you specializing in particular age group or uh, middle school, high school? I would like to visit everyone. Uh -huh. um, so my background is as a middle school educator. And so most of the presentations that I do currently are with the elementary age children, middle school. And so if any high school teachers would like mm -hmm. someone to come in, um, besides myself, I can offer up our many scientists at NOAA. Uh, I also have our partners with the monument come in and do presentations. And so there are so many people that would love to come to the classroom that it's too long of a list to That's wonderful. go through right are now. Are there formal um, programs within higher education right now as part of um, the University of Hawaii or HPU? Do you have uh, partnerships there? We do. we do. We work a lot with the University of Hawaii, both here in Manoa and in Hilo. Um, do you know, did you want to say something? We have the uh, Marine Options Program, yeah. and that's one of our MOP. main programs. MOP. MOP. Yes. yes. MOP, to uh, help train divers. And how know? is NOAA involved in that? So our staff, our scientists, and our field staff uh, train the divers in the Quest Program at UH Hilo, and they also mentor them so that they can, and they choose like the best of the, and the best and the brightest from those programs to be on, to participate in some of the research cruises that go up to the monument. Right, so yes. like on your cruise that you went up there. Exactly, yes. we had some students Many scientists from, and students. Exactly, exactly. So we like to mentor the next generation of marine scientists and marine resource managers because, you know, at some point we're gonna have to leave the farm, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, we also have, in addition to Moku Papapa Discovery Center, so I don't know, in the news recently, maybe a week or two ago, we announced um, our formal publication of the discovery of a new butterfly fish species from butterfly the Butterfly fish. Butterfly fish species. Um, and it's pretty rare to find a new species of fish. So, and how oh, great, we have this beautiful picture. My beautiful. Isn't it beautiful? And, you know, interestingly for any divers or snorkelers who are familiar with butterfly fish, typically butterfly fish tend to hang out in pairs when you see them on the reef swimming around. This particular butterfly fish hangs out in sets triads. of three. Yeah, triads. Ah. Yeah, so, um, if you want to see this species live, we actually have some um, at the Mokupapapa Discovery Center in, in Hilo. Hilo. We have... S How big is it? They're pretty small. Uh -huh. um, you know, the size is about like that, I want to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Four or five inches. Yeah. We also have specimen at the Waikiki Aquarium, which has been there for a while before the species was actually described. So it was 
formerly an undescribed species of butterfly fish, but now that we have announced it, now they know what it is. Um, so that's at Waikiki Aquarium in our Northwestern Hawaiian uh, Islands exhibit tank. So you can go there to see it. Or uh, the Bishop Museum is currently running an exhibit called Journeys, which is all about, <coughs> excuse me, it's all about the Northwestern Hawaiian Islands. So, and that's there until January, the end of January 2017. And as part of that exhibit, they are uh, exhibiting the live species of three of those butterfly fish that were, were taken all together because they were hanging out together. Right. So the, they wanted to keep them together. So now they're at the Bishop Museum, so you can see them there as well. Wonderful. So yeah. was the Bishop Museum um, uh, plan, plan to, of course, have this um, special exhibit coordinating timing with the expansion of the you know what? I think you're going to have to ask them. It may have just been propitious timing. <laughs> I don't know. But I mean, it was sort of, so this year is also our 10 year anniversary of the monument. So it may have had to do with that. And then the timing was just perfect. You know, all the stars mm -hmm. aligned and it worked out perfectly. So it's a really nice exhibit if you, you've been there. Yes. So if you want to see more about the Northwestern Hawaiian Islands, you can go to those three places. Wonderful. Yeah. And any other education? programs that you've been involved with that's there to... Yeah, we go to a lot of the um, on-island um, uh, outreach events. So what are some of the recent ones that are coming up? We had Turtle Bay. We do Turtle Bay every year. I'm trying to think of what's coming up. So what do you do with Turtle future? Bay? Well, usually they have those... Did you Ocean say? Fest. Ocean Fest. Ocean, Ocean Fest. Thank you. And so Ocean Fest, we go there. We go to any event um, at the aquarium. We mm -hmm. went to the zoo for, is it World it was, Wildlife? They always have some sort, Day. any sort of conservation-y or animal-related we'll outreach there. event. So Bishop Museum has Science Alive. Were you involved in the IUCN? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes. So we had a number of different staff and partners did various presentations and appeared on different panels. Um, we had our Science on a Sphere, which is the big sort of globe, floating globe that you can make presentations on. Um, we cool. had uh, one NOAA booth, um, which had all of our different offices. So we work for the Office of National Marine Sanctuaries, but we have many other different NOAA offices who we work together with. Fisheries, the Weather Service, like all of them. And then we have different partners in the other agencies, so Fish and Wildlife Service and the State of Hawaii and the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. So we all had a very large presence at this World Conservation Congress. Right. And I know, of course, the announcement was made by our own President mm -hmm. Obama. And um, were you involved in that in preparation or were you present for it? Or <laughs> did you? I wish we could say that we got a <laughs> chance to meet the president. You know, we were hoping we right? <laughs> we were all really hoping. Um, but he actually did get to visit Midway Atoll. Right. Um, I think he was there just for one day or less yes. than a day. But, you know, Third it was day, important yes. for him to make a presence there to show how important it was to acknowledge his decision to expand the monument and really to show how um, he's got climate change as one of the priorities for moving forward, you know, addressing climate change. And he also ta had a talk the night before he went to the monument with the Pacific leaders that have been, that were here for the conference to discuss the challenges of uh, climate change and the need to work together, all nations together. One nation can't do it alone. It's a global concern. Um, so I think that was really important that he, he did that. Right. Yeah. Now, there's been a lot of, of course, um, a concern by the fishing industry about the expansion. And I was wondering, do you have any comments about that or thoughts about that or how you respond to those kinds of concerns? Well, how we respond to that is you have to talk to the fisheries line office. So we're, like I said, we're Office of National Marine Sanctuary, so we don't, per, our office per se doesn't deal with right. that topic specifically. So there, we don't really, we can't answer that. Okay. And yeah. where do you see what's going to be the situation in 10 years? So do we see a proliferation of all these wonderful new species that we found? And what can we look forward to? Well, certainly we hope that more species will be discovered. Most likely there will be many more species discovered, not only in the expansion area, but also in the what was the existing uh, monument boundaries because so much of, so little of it has been uh, explored because it's so large. That's one of the big challenges. So we, have, we do have a lot of work ahead of us. I think 10 years 
probably would still just be a drop in the bucket. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's very exciting time, right? It is very exciting. And I mean, as we've mentioned, all of our special sea creatures, they don't just live within the boundaries. And so now they have a much larger right. area to explore and to be researched. And so again, like Tony said, very exciting and we are bound to find more and more species and, and trying to just get a better picture of our very, very unexplored oceans. Great. Well, we just have a couple of minutes left and I'm wondering, do you have any closing thoughts or comments that you'd like to leave with our viewers about what they can do to participate more or what, we, what we've learned? Yeah, once again, if you would like to learn more about the monument, please visit our Papahanaumokuakea website. And then please come see us at any of the various outreach events around the island throughout the year. Do you please. have one coming up soon? You know what? I know that we do. Okay. And we'll we have it listed on our website. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. We're a little brain dead after this whole expansion Sorry. and the World Conservation yes. Congress. But no, really, it's just um, learning more about conservation, not just the monument, but what you can do here at home to to improve the conditions of the ocean. So for example, you know, joining in any beach cleanups, because I think we talked about in the, um, in the session before, the amount of marine debris that accumulates in the monument, which is the remotest place on earth, is staggering. Oh my goodness. Okay, it's like about 50 tons per year accumulates the, there. And we, NOAA and our partners, every year go up there to remove that marine debris and we usually leave with about 50 tons more or less but that's only because that's what can fit on the ship there's still much more that's left there but since we've been removing marine debris in the monument over 900 tons have been removed from this remotest place in on the planet and that's about equal to a thousand Volkswagen Beetles roughly so amazing. it's amazing. Yes. So going back to your question of what can people do, just be conscient, conscientious about what you're using. Throw it away in the proper place, or better yet, don't use something in the first place if you don't need to. Like mm -hmm. use a reusable water bottle, reusable right. bag. I mean, you've heard it all before. Yes. It's kind of like, yeah, I've heard all that before, but it's true. Yep. Reduce, yeah. reuse, recycle, and refuse. If right. you don't reuse absolutely new. need something, please yeah. don't use it because there's a chance that it may wash up yeah. on these Thank beautiful you. pristine yeah. islands. Straws in particular. Just okay. get your own stainless steel straw. Thank you. Well, that's <laughs> a perfect ending to this very important topic, particularly those of us here in Hawaii, this island community, that we want to preserve and for the next generation. Well, thank you so much to Tony. Thank you. And to Kainoa. Uh, you on behalf of us. Kirsten and Sustainable Hawaii, we'll see you next week. We'll see you soon. And uh, aloha. Aloha. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Pretty.